Now it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the land of Moab with his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah. Now they entered the land of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. And they took for themselves Moabite women as wives. The name of the one was Orpah, the name of the other Ruth. And they lived there about ten years. Then both Malan and Chilion also died, and the woman was bereft of her two children and her husband. Hey, good morning. This is Pastor Steve Mapp, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for our devotion uh, for this Friday. I was actually reading from the book of Ruth, the very first chapter and the first five verses of the story, uh, the narrative of Ruth. Uh, Dr. Benjamin will be beginning uh, on this Sunday uh, a series, a four-part series on the book of Ruth, and he will be talking uh, this Sunday, um, about when bad news breaks. And so um, I felt it was a, a good opportunity for me this morning to, to introduce this series for us uh, in this time of devotion. And as I read this, uh, I could only imagine the, just the pain that Naomi suffered uh, as did Orpah and Ruth, uh, in the losses of these men in their lives, these loved ones. Um, the story starts out, of course, with this famine in, in Israel and uh, Elimelech and Naomi and the sons leaving there to go and, and find sustenance, sustenance in another place. And then to, to have these tragedies happen in their lives, the loss of Naomi's husband and her two sons, and of course the husbands of uh, uh, their daughters-in-law, and of course throughout uh, our lives, we're we're sometimes faced with tragedies like this, and and significant loss does happen, um, and a lot of times we can ask ourselves, where is God in all of this? And uh, and the book of Ruth, this four-chapter book, is such a marvelous book about God's character and how he provides for us uh, a pathway uh, to healing when our trust is in him. And uh, it's amazing how the pieces just fall together under God's orchestration. It's a fascinating story. And, and I look forward to, uh, to Dr. Benjamin's sermons uh, on this book, and I hope that you will as well. But, but for this morning, uh, what I wanted to, uh, to spend just a little bit of time with um, is just how incredibly uh, important it is to be able to uh, to trust in a God who loves us, whose nature it is to uh, to protect us and to shield us and to uh, and to carry us through uh, the tough times of our lives when uh, when the unexpected happens, um, and even when the expected happens, that creates such a a loss and a missing in our lives. And I, I thought this morning about how it must have felt to Naomi uh, when those events happened. The scripture doesn't tell us that, uh, that Elimelech or Malon and Chilion uh, uh, had extensive illnesses that lasted a while. We are just told that, uh, that they die. And of course, uh, for a mother to lose a husband and two sons, uh, it's just devastating devastating. And I have been reading recently a book that I wanted to share with you a little bit out of. Uh, it's called Every Moment Holy. And this particular volume uh, I found so helpful to me in my work as a pastoral care minister. And so this morning, what I wanted to read to you in anticipation of Dr. Benjamin's series, uh, but also in, uh, in light of the fact that we all have suffered loss uh, throughout our lives. And sometimes those losses are particularly devastating. And, 
uh, and we're just we're crushed and shocked and, and, and knocked to our knees, just as Naomi must have been, uh, and Ruth and Orpah uh, in these moments. And so I came across this, uh, this reading, this liturgy for when the news is bad, and I wanted to share it with you because it speaks to uh, our trust uh, in the nature and character of God. And so here's the prayer. God, my rock, fortress, and eternal foundation. Be present in this moment of my fear, for the footings of my life as I've known it are shaken. Unwelcome news has tilted the world suddenly, robbing me of balance and bearing, casting all plans for pleasant futures in a wavering light. How am I to process this hard report, O oh Lord, this intrusive revelation of my own frailty and mortality, frailty coupled, coupled with a fear that further tests, treatments, consultations could lead to news still worse, and that this moment might in hindsight be seen as the beginning of the chapter that will close with my final breath. And let me just interrupt here just for a moment. That's how Naomi felt. And we'll learn about that as we study chapter 1 this Sunday. O oh God who fights for me, be present in this first confusion. Be present in this first uncertain distress. Be present in my passage through denial, anger, frustration, and fear. Shepherd me, O oh God through every anxiety, as I and all who love me seek to absorb this blow. Be near in ways that I can sense and know. Convince me of your care. Be everlasting my rock, my unassailable fortress, my fierce defender. Steady the spinning of my world. Amen. Boy, I can only imagine that, that that would have been Naomi's prayer and Ruth's prayer uh, uh, in these moments. And we do learn throughout the book of Ruth as we progress through it that God is our defender. He is our provider. He does prepare for us a pathway. Uh, how great is our God. Amen. Hey, thanks for listening this morning. I do hope that you'll be able to make it to Winfrey uh, this Sunday and be present with us for the beginning of this series or listen online as those, uh, as those recordings are presented uh, on our website and learn along with me and all the others just how great this God is and how he is present to us even when the news is bad. Hey. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to be a part of, uh, of, of this day with you uh, in this devotion. May God bless you today. Know that we're praying for you, and we look forward to being with you again. Have a great day, and God bless you.